Hello everyone and welcome to this video wherein we look into the evolution of AI and look at research to understand the potential impacts of generative AI on the future of jobs around the world. Are we going to worry about AI taking our jobs very soon? Let's find out. AI has entered our lives in most things that we do, be it various technologies powering our phones, the smart driving features we use on our modern cars, home security systems, education systems and so on. But the latest generative AI applications developed are not only able to perform routine tasks like processing and classification of data, but also complex tasks like writing innovative pieces of content, answering questions and concerns, creating digital art, and composing digital music. Now, technological advances and the resulting changes in workforces aren't new. Technological changes and job changes are the norm in human society. But technological advances in the mid and late 1900s were focused on manual workers. And new advances in machine learning are ensuring that computers would soon be performing cognitive tasks to a quality that would affect white-collar workers in multiple specialties too. So this time, the effects would be seen in white-collar jobs too. Recent research has indicated that latest generative AI models are increasingly becoming capable of carrying out tasks that span coding, mathematics, design, medicine, law, psychology and more, suggesting early forms of reasoning. The focus of this video is therefore going to be an overview on how we got to this point, what generative AI is, what the future of the job market looks like with the advancement of AI in general and generative AI in particular, what jobs could be affected the most and how one can try and adapt to the advancements in AI. And yes, we do have an important discussion point at the end so that you can provide your insights, your experiences and your predictions for the future. So how did we get here? AI first started entering our workplaces in the late 20th century in, a very, in very specialized domains. Machine learning was one of the benchmarks in AI advancements, as machine learning is a way to teach computers to learn, improve and reduce errors. Machine learning then led to the development of decision trees and neural networks, which enabled AI to tackle more complex tasks like speech recognition, image recognition, and natural language processing, which refers to the ability to understand text and words the same way as the human brain does. In the 2010s, AI got revolutionized by the development of deep learning using deep architecture and foundation models and multi-layered artificial neural networks. So, we essentially took inspiration from the way the human brain processes neurons and tried making information flow in the same way in computer networks. Advancements in deep learning gave birth to tools like chatbots, virtual assistants and other intelligent automation tools. Generative AI is a byproduct of deep learning specifically designed to make machines learn the same way as humans do, but with access to virtually unlimited information available in the World Wide Web. Generative AI can actually create multiple forms of brand new content when instructed by a user, and it actually learns and gets better with every use. OpenAI's ChatGPT4, which stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformers, is one of the latest examples of generative AI's advancement. At this stage, most of us have either heard about, read or used ChatGPT. Many of us also know of generative AI image creators like DAL-E by OpenAI or Microsoft's Image Creator or Dream Studio by Stability AI. The usefulness of image creators is such that many of the images used in this video are actually created by one of them. There also exists a host of AI music generators like Mubert and Ava, which can enable one to create music or compose entire songs without knowing musical instruments or the basics of songwriting. So this is how far we've got. Now let's look at what research suggests about the trajectory of AI and how it could affect the job market. 
Firstly, research suggests that AI in general has a greater potential for job augmentation than automation. This means that AI is more likely to support jobs or increase productivity of existing jobs rather than automating them completely and replacing people in the process. Now that is what research suggests at this point. Going forward, please note that when we say augmentation, we refer to supporting existing jobs in the current scenario and when we mention automation, we refer to jobs getting automated resulting in potential human job losses. A 2023 research paper by the International Labour Organization in Geneva suggests the following. Generative AI has a high potential for automation and augmentation for individuals performing work that can be categorized as knowledge work. Now, knowledge work essentially includes a category of professionals who apply analytical and theoretical knowledge through acquired training. So this category actually includes professionals like analysts, programmers, technical writers, designers, clerical staff, and so on. The paper further clarifies that for most of the jobs under knowledge work, there is a high augmentation potential to begin with, and the highest automation potential from AI is actually for clerical jobs. So this is a type of job that is at highest risk. Multiple pieces of research concur and suggest that clerical jobs could actually become a thing of the past in the future and this in turn would also unfortunately affect the female employment ratio in the workplace. Continuing on, what are some of the other jobs that could be impacted because of an acceleration of automation caused by generative AI? According to a report published by McKinsey Global in 2023, below is the automation potential of the major occupation groups. What we see here ties in with what we've previously highlighted. An office support has a high automation potential. Now, office support would include clerical jobs. What we also see here is the automation potential of the first group was 15% before generative AI came along and is now at 54% we see a similar percentage change in automation potential of business and legal professionals, STEM professionals, which is science, tech, engineering, and maths, and many others. This is because of the increased natural language processing potential of generative AI, which makes it highly creative and resourceful. Specialized professionals in healthcare thankfully don't suffer as badly, and so do property management professionals. But an important point that both reports state is that these findings are based on data gathered mainly from the Western world. We'll look at a global perspective in a minute, but let's quickly look at a different report on the impact of AI on the job market. Here we're looking at a Goldman Sachs report on the effect of automation on the job market in the US and Europe again. So here we see again that the threat is the highest for support, clerical and admin jobs for both regions. And here we see logical coherent findings in relation to automating jobs like craft, trade, building and maintenance. Obviously, one can think that it's not easy to actually automate such jobs. Now, as we know, different parts of the world are at different points when it comes to technological utilization. So let's look at what the same McKinsey report says about AI adoption in different parts of the world. We see in the graphic below what the early and late implementation scenarios look like in several different countries in the world. It tries to predict how long it would take for jobs to be automated by 50% in these countries listed. It's important to note that the report makes this prediction taking into account the spread of technology in the countries, the cost of labor against the cost of technological implementation and the time it takes for new technologies to be adopted. The first chart shows early adoption, which means the implementation is timely and smooth despite various barriers that are normally in play across the world. And it's clear to see that in countries like the US and Germany, early adoption would mean 50% automation could be achieved by around 2026. And if we consider India, it could be around 2034 before we get there. And in case of delays and late adoptions, we see a potential 50% adoption in the US by around 2050 and in India 
around 2065. Now, in a global perspective, one can assume that a late adoption is more practical to consider than an early adoption. To elaborate this further, let's look at some simple data outlining internet usage across the world. Now, here we see data provided by a specialized agency working with the United Nations, which suggests that only 50% of the global rural population even uses internet, and the number goes down to a staggering 23% when we take Africa into consideration. This implies that for generative AI to fundamentally shift the economic and employment balance, the world will firstly need a rapid deployment of stable, fast internet connectivity in many parts of the world. We can assume that such massive strides won't practically be taken at least by 2040. We therefore probably have more time than we previously assumed to prepare ourselves to live in a world driven by generative AI, especially in the developing world. Regardless of where you are, we do need to actually prepare ourselves for generative AI and its impact. Now let's look at how we can do so. So how do you protect your job or business from generative AI? Here are some suggestions. Understand the different aspects of your job and watch the job market. If you're currently employed, this suggestion is for you. Firstly, list out the manual aspects of your job and think about if some of these aspects could be automated in due course. Then start keeping an eye on the job market, however settled and happy you are in your current role. And I don't imply that you move your job or your company if you don't want to. But just check the job portals using the exact same keywords that someone would do to find your job. Now check if the newer job openings for your job have aspects that you aren't fully familiar with. And also look for some aspects that you expected to find but you actually aren't finding. Now this whole exercise could tell you if there are newer tools or aspects to jobs similar to yours, which parts of your jobs are potentially getting automated and about what avenues you should be exploring to retain your job and strengthen your position in it. The next suggestion is to upskill. This suggestion applies to students and professionals alike. In this day and age, it's extremely important to keep upskilling and reskilling yourself. Keep yourself informed on the latest developments in your field and train yourself. Attend courses, get certified. Remember that not all certifications need to be very expensive. One can always find valuable courses and certifications for not much. Leadership and the human touch. This is again for people who are employed. It's important to demonstrate leadership capabilities and a human touch in everything you do. A human touch means collaborating with people and establishing your presence across departments. If you get noticed as someone who is collaborative, you'll not easily be replaced. Also work towards leading and mentoring people. We're still far away from a situation wherein technology could lead, mentor and empathize with people. So go out there and grab opportunities to demonstrate different skills and be visible to management while doing it. The final suggestion is to use technology and to be seen to be optimistic about technology. Now this is for everyone, including small business owners, students and employees. It's important in this day and age to be seen to be adapting to technological changes and be optimistic. Whatever you feel about technology and AI, if you're seen as someone who'll be happy to use technology to make your job and life easier and more productive, organizations will hire you, will be open to retaining you and your customers, if you're a small business, will continue buying from you. Great, and now for our discussion point in this tutorial. As we all know, Elon Musk famously quoted AI to be a danger to the public and warned that people should be cautious about advancements in AI. But here we are watching AI quietly getting better, quietly using it, quietly watching call centers use AI to provide us better customer service and so on. So what are your thoughts and intuitions about AI and also specifically about generative AI? Are you, the viewer of this tutorial, genuinely excited about how AI will help us improve our productivity or do you dread that we are slowly heading towards a point where AI will one day become better than us like we've seen in countless 
science fiction movies at what point do you think governments would need to step in and control the growth and the impact of ai in our society let us know in the comment section and as always thank you very much for your attendance to this video and please like the content in this channel share and please take very good care of your own self thank you bye bye